Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 38. Lesson number 38. Day 38 out of the third edition. We are on page number 246, I believe. Just give me one second. 246. The very first problem that we're going to do is already on the blackboard. We are on page number 246. Please turn to it. On that page, you will find this problem number 2.7.5. This problem, number 5, number 6, and number 7, the three problems that we're going to do today are the same exact problem that already appeared in the first and the second edition of the GRE. In the event that you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you'll find the, all the original solutions from first edition on day number 109 and 110. Just type in GRE math, day 109, it will pop right up. The series for the third edition begins with day 3001. 3, the third edition. Okay, here's what it says. It says that we have a mixture. We have a 12 ounce mixture. We are told that it is made up of oil and vinegar. We are further told that the mixture is 40% vinegar. 40% of the mixture is vinegar. The question simply is that's, that that concentration is too high. We want to reduce the concentration of vinegar to 25%. Instead of 40%, we want 25%. The question is, how much oil must we add to bring the concentration down? Let's see what we can do. Well, first thing we need to figure out is how much. First thing we need to figure out is how much vinegar do we have here to start out with. So here's the solution. Rather, here is the solution, not a solution. Here's the solution. The amount. The amount of vinegar. present in the mixture that's what we need to know first and we know it is 40 percent we are told that the 40 percent of the mixture is vinegar so it's 40 percent of 12 40 percent of 12 4 twelves at 48 4 times 12 is 48 4 twelves are 48 since this percentage is 4.8 ounces 4.8 ounce is the vinegar and that is not going to change because we're not adding any any more vinegar we're simply going to add oil so let's add let's add oil shall we let's add let's add how much oil would you like to eat or how much oil would you like to add I would like to add x ounces of oil to the mixture as soon as we add X ounces of oil to the mixture, the new solution now, the new solution has not 12 ounces now, but a total of 12 plus X ounces. Because it's 12 ounces to begin with, there were 12 ounces to begin with, and we just added another X ounces of oil to it. So now the total amount of uh, mixture that we have is 12.X ounces. We're almost done. Now we have to figure out. The question is, how much oil are we, how much oil are we going to add? We're going to add x ounces, and now we can figure out the x. So now, if you look at the ratio of vinegar to oil, or rather, to vinegar to total, is what we're looking for. The vinegar doesn't change. Vinegar is 4.8 ounces. It's still the same. 4.8 ounces. And the total now, instead of being 12 ounces, instead of being 12 ounces, is 12 plus, 12 plus x ounces. And you can see, the ounces drop out. And that ratio, we are told, has to equal one quarter, or if you like, 25%. The new concentration is 25%. That's all. All you have to do is simply solve this very straightforward, very simple equation. Let's put it down here. We can cross multiply 
4 times 4.8 equals 12 plus, 12 plus x times 1, which is just 12 plus x. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 8 is 32, but because it is 0.8, it's going to be 3.2. Okay, one more time, one more time, 4 4 is a 16 and 4 8 is a 32, but it's 0 0.8 so it's going to be 3.8. So that's 19.2 19 equals 12 plus x. Subtract 12 from both sides and we get x is equal to 7.2 I believe. 7.2. The question was how much oil must we add so that we reduce the concentration of vinegar from 40% down to 25%. The answer is we must add about seven ounces, 7.2, seven and a fifth ounce of seven and a fifth ounce of oil must be added in order to have the desired effect, in order to have the concentration that we are looking for, 25% that is. Let's do the next one, shall we? 2.5 points, 2.7.6. 2.7.6. We are told that the Jeff is, we have two people, we have two people, we have Jeff and we are told that Jeff is driving at 51 miles per hour and it took him 40 minutes to where he, was, where he wanted to go. We have another person by the name of Dennis and Dennis we are told is going at 54 miles per hour and he's going to travel the same course. It's going to travel the same course, same distance, and the question of course is very straightforward. The question is how long how long did Dennis take? If you want to give it a try yourself first, you can do so. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. So here we go. Let's first take care of Jeff. Let's first take care of Jeff. We know how fast he's going. We know how fast he's going. We know he's going at 51 miles per hour. We also know that it's been going, it took him 40 minutes to finish the course. Well, if it took him 40 minutes to finish the course and we know how fast he was going, we can easily figure out the length of the course. And once we have the length of the course, we can figure out how long the other guy will take because we know his speed. So let's take care of Jeff first. So here's the solution. First Jeff. Jeff we know is going at 51 miles in one hour. He's going 51 miles in one hour. And how do we know that? Well, because we are told that. 51 miles, 51 miles per hour. But he did not go for an hour. It took him only 40 minutes. Or 40 minutes, 40 minutes we know is two thirds of an hour, isn't it? So he goes 51 miles, 51 miles in one hour. How far do you suppose he will go in two thirds of an hour? Well, it's very simple. Multiply both sides of the equation by two thirds. Multiply this side of the equation by two thirds, and multiply this side of the equation by two thirds. It is an equation. Equation statement same thing. Do you understand? Multiply both sides of the statement by two thirds. That's it. We are done. Now we have two third hour here, which is the 40 minutes we can figure out the length of the course. Divide top and bottom by 3. We're going to divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. 5 only has 1 3. After we take away the 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21, and 21 has 7 3's. 7 3's are 21. There we go. 17 times 2 is 34 miles. Oh, I should put there. It is 34 miles. So now the question boils down to how long now we take now we talk about Dennis. Question now boils down to how long will Dennis take? How long? Isn't that what they're asking? How long? There you go. How long did Dennis take? How long does Dennis take to go 34 miles at 54 miles per hour. 
That's the question. Let's do it on the top, shall we? We're done with all of this thing. I'm going to raise it because we need the room. Now we're dealing with Dennis, okay? Remember that. How long will it take him to go 34 miles at 54 miles per hour? At 54 miles per hour. So let's, let's, let's start with that. 54 miles in one hour. In one hour. Which is same as saying 60 minutes. This is Dennis, do you understand? Well, if he's going 54 miles in one hour, in 60 minutes, in 60 minutes, which, which implies, which must imply that he must go one mile in 54th of the amount of time. Right? Well, if he can go one mile in this much amount, we don't want him to go one mile, we, we want him to go 34 miles. We don't want him to go one mile, we want him to go 34 miles. Let's multiply both sides of this statement by 34. Voila. One more time. He goes 54 miles in 60 minutes. Well, if he goes 54 miles in 60 minutes, he must go 1 mile in 60 over 54 minutes. Well, if he goes 1 mile in 60 over 54 minutes, then he must go 34 miles in 34 times this amount. All we have to do is work on this thing and we will have our answer. I forgot now if this is our second question or third one. This is only the second one. We have one more to go. We're going to do three today. Do you understand? So let's do it out, shall we? Well, this part is very straightforward. 60 over 54 times 34. The first part is very straightforward because they are both multiples of 6. Let's divide top and bottom by 6. 60 has 10 sixes and 54 has 9 sixes. So there you go. We have to figure out now what is 34 times 10 ninth. What is 34 times 10 ninth? That's, that's, that's what we have to figure out here, which is same as saying, which is same as saying what is 34 times 1 and 1 ninth. Are you still with me? Okay, let's continue. I should have I should have continued here with the equal sign, it would have been it would have looked better, which is same as 34 times 1 and 1 9. There you go, it looks much better. 34 times 1 and 1 9 is same as 34 times 1 is just 34 and 34 times 1 9 is just going to be 34 over 9 Are you still with me? Which is same as 34 plus 27 9 plus after we take our 27 from 34 we'll have 7 9 Still with me? 34 plus 27 9 is 3 so that's 37 and 7 9 and how much is 7th line? Do, do you know? How much is 7 ninth? I hope that you know, I hope that you know that 1 ninth is 0.1 repeating. And if you don't believe it, do it out. 2 ninth is 0.2 repeating. For example, let's do it here. We are done with all of this thing. For example, if you want to do 2 ninth, it's going to be 2 divided by 9, 2 divided by 9. We put a decimal there, it comes to 20. 20 has 2 nines, which is 18. We have a 2 again, put a 0 there. We have 2 again, we have 18, 12, 20, 2 again, it's just 0 0.2 repeating. 2 9 is 0 0.2 repeating. Similarly, 3 9, which of course we know is 1 third, is 1 third, which is why it's 0 0.3 repeating. So on and so forth. What do you suppose 7 9 is going to be? 7 9 is 37. I should keep this separate. 7 9 is 0.7 repeating. 0.7 repeating. And since it's more than 5, 0.7 repeating, we can round it up if you like to 37.8 hours approximately. We can no longer make a claim that is exactly because the exact amount is this 37 and 0.7 repeating. 37.8, uh, not, uh, not hours, sorry, minutes. That's it. That was the end of that problem. Do you understand? Let's go to the next one. Number 3. 2.7.7. 2.7.7. 2. 
2.7.7 it says a takes three hours to do a job we are further told that b takes two hours to do the same job which simply is how long together how long will they take if they were to work at their respective pace at their respective paces simultaneously the question is simply that and these are what are known as work time problems the one we are dealing with actually is very babyish it's very simple very straightforward something like this will appear in the exam as an easy question in the medium of course it's going to be a little bit more challenging the question is are you somebody who can solve hard work time problem in the exam in the time that is allotted and in, in order for you to be able to do that in order for you to be able to have that ability you must practice ahead of time you must get yourself acquainted with these questions i'm going to give you a source five problems actually i want you to watch the videos and solve those five problems with me in a series called basic math on my channel you will find a series of videos simply called basic math no need to type in jre just basic math day 111 day 111 through 115 those are the easy ones then day 131 through 135 those are a little bit more challenging medium ones and finally if you can achieve these questions if you can achieve if you can uh, do, do the last five questions 109 day 196 to 200 that's when we know, that's when you know that you have arrived do you understand well the, the simplest the quickest way to take care of this problem is to make them both work the same number of hours here we have different numbers of hours three and a two and the thing to do here is to get their least common multiplier the smallest number possible that you can think of which is about multiple of 3 and a 2 which is called the least common multiplier LCM the LCM of, LCM of, three, LCM of 3 and 2 is 6 as I told you it's a very simple problem let them work 6 hours let them work here's the solution let them work for 6 hours and what do we know? If, if they were to work six hours, then in six hours, in six hours, A can do. Well, A takes three hours to do a job. If you give him six hours, he can do two jobs. And B, in six hours, B can do. Or well, B takes only two hours to do a job. Give him six hours, and he can do three jobs. You with me so far? That implies that implies that if they were to work together in six hours together, together they can do five jobs in six hours. You still with me? Makes perfect sense. Give them equal number of hours so that we don't have to worry about the different speeds and just look at the amount of work that they do. A can do in six hours two jobs. We can do in six hours three jobs. In other words, give them six hours and they can do five jobs. Five jobs in six hours. We don't want to do five jobs. We only want to do one job. If they can do five jobs in six hours, that implies they must be able to do one job together in six fifths of an hour. Six fifths of an hour. Six fifths of an hour is simply one and one fifth hour, which is one hour and a fifth of an hour. A fifth of 60 is 12. They can do the job working together in a mere one hour and 12 minutes or one and a fifth of an hour, one and one fifth of an hour. I will see you tomorrow where we'll pick up from the fruit stand 2.8
2.9 those two problems will do tomorrow okay bye now